I'm a wine economist from the United States, and I, I study the global wine markets, and I'm here in Porto today to talk about the U.S. market, which is one of the most important markets for bottled wine exports from uh, around the world. And I see great opportunities for Portuguese wines in the U.S. market. And there are several reasons for this, of course. The uh, uh, one has nothing to do with the wine, really, but Portugal has become a, such a a tremendous tourist destination for American tourists and they come here and they they meet the wonderful people and eat the wonderful food and they visit Porto and and taste the wines even if they don't come to Porto if they're in Lisbon on the main square there's a the wines of Portugal has a tasting room where they can taste through all of the different regions from there and so they they go home and they think oh we I love Port Portugal so much and they begin to look for the wines. And so this moment of popularity of Portugal for tourists is very important. So it's important now to build on this. And in terms of the dynamics of the U.S. market, these are also quite favorable. First of all, in the U.S. market, inexpensive wines, wines that Portugal would not be able to compete with, that side of the market is in decline. Uh, the money is not there. But people are now willing to spend more for higher quality wines. And so these are the wines, the bottled wines, high quality wines that Portugal can begin to begin to export to the U.S. market. And uh, they will be very welcome there. Uh, American consumers are also have changed in an interesting way that um, in the past, American consumers looked focused first on the variety. Do I know what grape is in the bottle? And this was often a disadvantage in the U.S. for Portuguese wines because Portuguese grape varieties are not familiar. Americans are more familiar with French varieties like Chardonnay and Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, but now not only are American consumers more willing to try different wines, they are very interested in blends of wines where, where they don't really know what's in the bottle, they just know that they like it. And so I've noticed a number of important Portuguese wineries are, uh, are are selling uh, blends of red uh, wines, blends of white wines, and uh, people pick them up. This is this is wonderful. So they do that. So in addition to, of course, port wines, which will always be important, and the very popular Vinho Verde wines, which have a strong following in the U.S. Now we find wines from the Douro and the Dao and other regions that. Uh, have the blends of grapes that people are looking for at prices that they want, and they bring back wonderful memories of time in Portugal. So, uh, the moment for Portuguese wine. Well, I mean, I think you know, I was brought here today to talk about wine closures, and uh, we've done yeah. some fantastic research on closures, and we know that American consumers certainly prefer natural cork. I think Portugal really represents the natural cork industry to the U.S., um, but I think that you know you have a huge opportunity to increase consumer acceptance and awareness of not only Portuguese cork but also Portuguese wines. So I think understanding uh, the American consumer and making sure that you can tailor the wines to that market would be a wonderful opportunity for you guys to increase right. consumption. I think uh, uh, in China there's lots of opportunities. Uh, every you know, Chinese oh, people are quite open-minded and they are I willing to uh, adapt a lot of good things from other countries. I think uh, from Portuguese wines or Spanish wines or other uh, imported wines will certainly gain uh, a market share in China. Uh, speaking about uh, the closure preferences for Chinese consumers, I still think the cork uh, will resemble a quality and also ageability, I think uh, uh, it uh, will never be replaced by other closures. I love cork. <laughs>